Morgan. Guten Morgen. That's what they say in Munich. In Germany, Guten Morgen. Can I just say something before we continue reading in Hebrews? My wife and I were recently in Spain and we we're watching TV and they had like international channels. Very little in English, although they had BBC. But they had obviously a lot in, in Spanish and an Italian channel, but there was a German channel. So just my opinion, you know, the German language, my camera person and producer here, Stephen, I have to be careful, he's German, but it's not a romance language like French, Italian, Spanish, mi amor, mi corazón, te amo mucho, you know, all of that. So while we were watching it, my wife said to me, listen how guttural and choppy that German sounds. And sure enough, they went to uh, um, music, German, German music, where a lady was singing a love song to a guy, and it was whack. It was totally, it was like, hock in hock. It, it sounded like she was upset with him. Not that she liked him, but that's another whole matter. I love the Romance language. Well, I guess that's why there's not a lot of German operas being performed, but a lot of Italian. And French is beautiful, too. So we're reading in Hebrews chapter 12, the encouragement the writer's giving us that it's a long race, a marathon, the Christian life, not a dash, not a short run of 100 yards. Got to keep going. Verse 7, we've read, we're going to read, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? So they're going through hard times. He says, treat that as discipline. God's treating you as children because fathers, and back in those days, the father had the sole role of disciplining the children, not the mother. So endure it because God's treating you as a son. And this is a word of encouragement. We don't take that too well here because in the Western world, if it feels good, it means you love me. If anything is uncomfortable, why you do that to me? Right? That's the way we think. But the hard times in life that God permits and the personal discipline whom the Lord loves, he chastens and disciplines. When we're starting to get off the road, like someone listening to me today, maybe, Ah, he's taking away your sleep. Don't sleep so well. Ah, that lack of peace. Maybe that's the Lord's chastening, saying, I need your attention here. Look at this thing that's starting to grow up in your life, this area of bitterness, strife, jealousy, uncleanness, whatever it might be. Now, there's been arguments made Know that the Lord, and then some Christians don't agree with this, know the Lord will put disease on you um, as a form of chastening. Other Christians say, no, he won't do that. Uh, others say, no, he can do that to really get our attention. But all of it, the dealings of God with us, and you know, don't you know? I know when God's done pow-pow to me. Oh, there's nothing worse than being a Christian whom the Lord is disciplining. It does not feel good, as we're going to learn. But it's a sign of his love, and we're to endure it, not fighting against it, but enduring it and realizing it's a sign of his love. For if you're not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you're not legitimate children. You're not true sons and daughters at all. The sign of being daddy's girl or daddy's boy is that daddy is going to discipline when he sees us going down a rabbit trail that leads to a brick wall and you're going 60 miles an hour 
and it's a big, bad crash. So what should God do when you and I are wandering? Should he say, you go, girl, whatever you want? No, no one does that. I talked to a mother, counseled her the other day, and her children were hanging around uh, once a son with guys who are involved with drugs. And oh, she was so concerned. And she reprimanded him and, and wanted to know what else could she do. No parent who loves their child says, hang out with those guys selling fentanyl. Try some of yourself because you never know. You got to express yourself. No. That's how God is with us. Come on, let's be honest. We do some crazy things. We think crazy things. We hold on to things that only hurt us and others. And God chastens us through a myriad of ways, which I cannot say that I know all the ways that God chastens someone, but I know whom he loves. He chastens. He disciplines. Moreover, we all have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? Uh, an intelligent son realizes dad loves me and he's disciplining. He won't let me drive that car, you know, for a month. Yeah, because I backed into an oak tree, smashed it up without even looking in the rearview mirror. Discipline for my good. He doesn't want me to go out there and kill myself. And a lot of other ways. Very hard to apply this, at least in my mind and heart. Well, we respected our fathers, didn't we? Who disciplined us. How much more, the writer says, should we respect God who is doing it for our good? The scariest sentence that I hear in my office over the years is this kind of sentence. My life's going, I'll tell you what, Pastor, I'm mad at God. Whoa, whoa. I'm always listening for thunder and I'm a lightning bolt. Let's not, how can we be mad at the one who loves us? God loves us. Not just Jesus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So everything he does is for our good. Even the spankings, the chastenings, the discipline. Let's receive it so that we can really live. More tomorrow. God bless you. Amen.